Hey everyone here from Tunnel Vision TV and in this tutorial I'm going to show you guys how to shatter objects in Modo using procedural shatter. So here we are in Modo and um, let's start by creating a floor. So I'm just going to drag out a floor, something like that. I'm just going to call this mesh floor. All right, and then we're going to create a new mesh. Just press N on the keyboard and then we're going to create like a pillar or just like a box something like that okay that's pretty cool just gonna move it up slightly and as you can see our pivot point is not in the center of that object so i'm just going to center it quickly so i'm going to go to edit right at the top and go to center to bounding box and click on center and that's just going to center my pivot as you can see there as you can see i also added some segments you don't really have to do this but um, this was my default setting so that's actually fine and um, I'm going to just increase the size of the floor a little bit. So I'm just going to scale it up um, in this direction, also in this direction. All right, so let's create one more mesh. And that's going to be our sphere or our ball. So press N on the keyboard. And um, oh yeah, let's just rename our pillar or the box. I'm just going to call it box. It's not really a box, it's a pillar, but let's call it the box. All right, so our new mesh, we're going to create a sphere. And I'm just going to create a, um, if I hold down control and click on the sphere, I'm just going to create like a one meter by one meter sphere. And that's actually perfect for uh, this tutorial. So I'm just going to try and center it on that pillar, move it a little bit this way. And uh, what I want to do is I want to try and let this ball or the sphere just kind of move this way and go through the box or through the pillar and shatter the pillar as you saw in the, um, the render at the, at the beginning of this video. So I'm just going to move it up a little bit more, a little bit backwards. And that's basically our scene, all the stuff that we need. So let's just rename that mesh. I'm going to call it ball to make things nice and simple. And um, then we're going to go to the setup layout here at the top. And this is where we're going to be doing the uh, dynamics and the simulation. So let's start with the floor. So highlight the floor and then we're going to click on static rigid body. So make sure you're under dynamics here on the side and then just click static rigid body because obviously the floor is not going to move, but uh, we want the pieces to bounce on it. So it's going to be static. Okay, next let's do the ball or the sphere. So I'm going to click on the ball and then set that to active rigid body. And in a few moments, we'll also add some movement or an impulse to that uh, sphere. So it's actually getting thrown through this uh, pillar. And um, then lastly, click on your pillar or the box, and I'm going to click on Procedural Shatter here on the side. And that's going to create a new object or item for me called Procedural Shatter. And this is where we're going to set all the settings for um, the shatter effect, basically. Right, so now if we play this back, if we click on this um, Start Simulation button here at the bottom, you'll see that our pillar will actually shatter. And it's going to have two objects. You'll see that you'll still have your box object or your box mesh. And then you also have your procedural shatter mesh and the ball also falls down. So I'm going to stop that and I'm going to go to my box and then I'm just going to hide it. Okay, because we don't really need the box and the procedural shatter. We just need the procedural shatter in this. And now if I click on start simulation, you'll see that we have our pillar and it shatters as well. It's not really what we want. Okay, so I'm going to go to my uh, procedural shatter in the items list. And um, first of all, I'm going to set my pieces to, let's up it a bit to maybe 500. Okay, that's the amount of pieces that it's going to break into. And um, then also another important thing is this max levels. Now, if you set this on one, the mesh will break only once. If you set it to two, then it will break once. And then those pieces might break again. And if you set it to three, it might break three times, if that makes any sense. So I'm going to leave mine at one. I just want to just shatter once and the pieces will fly around and I don't want them to break again. Okay. And um, then we've got our breaking force. Now this is the force required to make this item break up into pieces. So 10 CN, I'm not exactly sure what the CN stands for, but that's not a very um, high or strong force. So I'm going to set this to, let's try one N, N for Newton, I think. Let's try and simulate this again, see what happens. And cool, so now you can see it's not being shattered, so that's actually perfect. Now we're going to click on the sphere or the ball and we're going to add some dynamic impulse to that. So it actually flies towards the, uh, the pillar. So on that um, ball, I'm going to go to dynamic and I'm going to go to impulse. And we want it, I think it's on the X axis. Let's just try minus 20. 
play that. There we go. So it's actually flying that way. And now it's calculating the shatter. And there you can see it's actually shattering that pillar. Okay, so let's change some of the properties of this ball. So under dynamics, I'm gonna just give it a bit of a heavier mass. So change this to local mass. And currently it's set to one kilogram. I'm gonna change this to 200 kilograms. Okay, nice and heavy. So let's simulate that again. Okay, now we need to increase our impulse. Because we increased the mass, we need to increase the impulse. So minus 20 Newton is not uh, strong enough so I'm gonna set this to minus let's try 3000 okay let's see how that works okay that's looking pretty cool uh, let's change some other settings as well I want this sphere or this ball to actually move a little bit into the air first and then come down so we want to give it a Y impulse as well so maybe like a 500 Newton upwards okay let's try that and as you can see there, the ball actually went up a little bit and then came down towards the pillar. And now we should see our shatter. There we go. That's looking pretty cool. All right. So now as you can see, our first frame or frame zero doesn't actually show the pillar, which is a bit strange. Um, but let me show you guys how to fix that when you actually um, cache your simulation. So once you're happy with the simulation, um, you're going to go to dynamics right at the top. And we're going to click on cache. Uh, simulation this one here and um, it's going to ask you which frames or the start time and the end time so I'm going to do the whole thing 0 to 120 and then this pre-roll is usually set to 0 and if you set this pre-roll to 1 it means that it's actually going to start the simulation one frame earlier which is at frame minus 1 and if you do this then frame 0 will actually um, have that pillar in so let me show you so pre-roll 1 click on OK and now it's just going to load for a bit and it's going to try and calculate all the uh, dynamics in the simulation. And um, let's just see, there we go, it's simulating it, it's running through it. And there we go, so we're on frame zero, we can see the pillar. And now if we scrub through, we can see our shatter effect, which is pretty cool. So let's just rotate around here, you can see it a bit nicer from this angle. And that's how easy it is to use the procedural shatter effect in Modo. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If it's your first time here, remember to click on that subscribe button because I do visual effects tutorials every single week. And if you subscribe, you'll be notified of these new tutorials. Thanks a lot for watching.